హలో ఎవ్రీ వన్ సో ఇన్ దిస్ వీడియో విల్ బి డిస్కసింగ్ అబౌట్ యువర్ జింజివైటిస్ దట్ ఈస్ ఐ విల్ టాక్ ఇన్ బ్రీఫ్ అబౌట్ యువర్ జింజవైల్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ అండ్ సమ్ ఆఫ్ ద క్లినికల్ ఫీచర్స్ దట్ ఆర్ అసోసియేటెడ్ విత్ యువర్ జింజవైటిస్ ఓకే సో ఫస్ట్లీ వాట్ ఇస్ జింజవైటిస్ ఐటిస్ ఇఫ్ యూ అటాచ్ ఐటిస్ టు ఎనీ వర్డ్ ఇట్ మీన్స్ ఇన్ఫ్లమేషన్ ఆఫ్ దట్ పర్టికులర్ రీజన్ రైట్ సో జింజవైటిస్ క్యాన్ బి డిఫైన్ సింప్లీ యాజ్ ది ఇన్ఫ్లమేషన్ of gingiva okay so to study what else what is happening during the inflammation of gingiva you should know what is happening in health what is the ideal health of a gingiva you can go back and listen to the gingiva video in this inflammation of gingiva there are various signs and symptoms or various changes to the morphology and physiology to the gingiva that is happening and these changes for the sake of studying are differentiated or classified into various stages they are classified into various stages you call them all the mass stages of gingivitis you can refer to the mass stages of gingivitis okay so this entire topic can be summarized in one single table you can lay, if you can learn this table it will answer all the other questions that can come so firstly to list out the different stages of gingivitis there are four stages number one it is referred to as initial stage or initial lesion then you have the early stage then you have the established stage and finally the advanced stage or the advanced lesion initial early established and advanced so now write down this table i'll be enumerating everything that comes in this one table okay so write down you can write it as the stage you can write it as in column 2 is the days or the duration days or duration right then you have the predominant cells that are associated in this particular stage and then you have other findings then you have other findings this is the headings of the table so firstly you have the first stage it is referred to as initial initial stage or the initial lesion this initial lesion let's say why this gingivitis happens let's say you do not maintain good plaque control then this plaque will act as an irritant as a causative agent wherein you get inflammation of a gingiva this plaque within the first 2 to 4 days whatever changes that are happening are referred to as the initial lesion or the stage 1 gingivitis stage 2 called as the early lesion it happens in 4 to 7 days stage 3 also called as the established stage happens in around 14 to 21 days predominant cells that are associated with stage 1 gingivitis are your pmns what are pmns pmns are nothing but your neutrophils they are nothing but the neutrophils any case please remember my dear students any inflammation or any challenge the first line of defense is always by your neutrophils first cells that go and attack is always your neutrophils that is why in stage 1 you have neutrophils stage 2 you have your t lymphocytes stage 3 you have your b lymphocytes also referred to as your plasma cells stage 4 is your advanced lesion it is beyond let's say around 25 to 28 days again the cells are your plasma cells Okay, predominant cells. Okay, this has come. They will ask you this question. Which cells are seen maximum or predominantly in which stage of gingivitis? Stage 1 neutrophils, stage 2 T lymphocytes, 3 and 4 it is plasma cells. Now, let's say a patient is coming to your clinic. You are an intern or a doctor. How will you tell the patient whether or not he or she has gingivitis? How will you diagnose your gingivitis? it is based upon the following many signs and symptoms right and the most 
ऑब्जेक्टिव साइड राइट केयरफुली द मोस्ट ऑब्जेक्टिव साइन ऑफ जिंजोवाइटिस एंड द फर्स्ट क्लिनिकल साइन ऑफ जिंजोवाइटिस इज योर ब्लीडिंग ऑन प्रोबिंग द ब्लीडिंग ऑन प्रोबिंग और अगर आप चेक ब्लीडिंग ऑन प्रोबिंग यू पुट अ प्रोब यू वेट फॉर 30 टू 60 सेकंड्स यू चेक फॉर ब्लीडिंग दिस ब्लीडिंग ऑन प्रोबिंग इट इज द फर्स्ट क्लिनिकल साइन and it is the most objective sign of gingivitis what do you mean by objective sign you have two types of exams in throughout your bds you are given your theoretical subjective exam all of a sudden you are made to write your neat which is an mcq based objective exam objective means you have to be specific it is the specificity that means i'll give you an example let's say a patient comes to you i ask you to tell which color his gingiva is i might tell it as red a girl might call it as pink someone else might call it as maroon right some will call it as light brown or anything it is called as subjective that means it is subject to change it is subject to the observer or the clinician right color they are subjective sign but bleeding on probing it is an objective sign that means if it is present for me it should be present for you also it is not like i put a probe there is bleeding suddenly you come the bleeding disappears no it's not a very with examiner that is why it is referred to as the objective sign and this is important so bleeding on probing it is the objective sign of gingivitis and the earliest clinical sign and most importantly even though it is the first clinical sign it is not seen in stage 1 but rather it is seen in stage 2 of gingivitis important it is seen only in the stage 2 of gingivitis so in your stage 2 you get bleeding on probing bop All right. Even though it is the first sign, it is not seen in stage one. Then what is stage one? If the first clinical signs are present in stage two, then stage one will be referred to as subclinical. Very good. It is referred to as subclinical gingivitis. That is, there are no clinical signs. But let's say you take a histological section. You can see PMNs, neutrophils aggregating. You can see increased GCF flow. Right. All these are subclinical signs. Whereas the clinical signs are present in stage two. Now coming to the stage three, or the established lesion. Most importantly, this stage three is the one which is most often referred to as chronic gingivitis. It is referred most commonly, although it is a misnomer. It is most commonly, standardly referred to as chronic gingivitis. It is the stage three gingivitis or the established lesion. Right. So. question has come in your exam is that chronic gingivitis occurs in dash weeks chronic gingivitis occurs in dash weeks so previously asked question right so you should know chronic gingivitis is the other name for stage 3 and stage 3 occurs in 14 to 21 days the answer is 14 to 21 days or 2 to 3 weeks that is the answer for this question right and what are the changes all the changes that you can attribute that is changes to your color changes to size changes to consistency right loss of stippling everything can be observed in this stage 3 or referred to as chronic gingivitis the predominant cells are your plasma cells or your b lymphocyte now coming to the stage 4 i call it as advanced lesion then i told the predominant cells are also plasma cells now what is the difference between stage 3 and stage 4 Hmm? same cells are mediated by the same cells difference is that your stage 4 or the advanced stage is characterized is characterized by beginning of periodontitis or in other words you get to see your attachment loss and bone loss starting beginning right it is the transition this stage marks the transition from gingivitis to periodontitis that is your even though we call it as stage 4 gingivitis it is actually the beginning stage of periodontitis it is the transition gradual shift from gingivitis to periodontitis that is the difference between stage 3 and stage 4 that is why stage 4 even though we write as advanced gingivitis it is the beginning periodontal destruction 
beginning periodontal destruction. Okay. So, this table it summarizes whatever you can study from this stages of gingivitis. Now, coming to the clinical features, clinical features of your gingivitis, right? All the features most probably you would have studied in fine layer, not going into the depth, right? Two or three specific features I have to tell you. The first thing is color. Color normally we study it as coral pink or a reddish pink as per your Carenza. Coral pink. But due to your gingivitis, what happens? There is vasodilation. There is vasodilation, increased vascular proliferation as with any other inflammation. So the color transitions from pink to red. Color transitions from pink to red. And if left unattended chronically, if left unattended chronically, this red color can then still transition into a blue color due to stasis of blood. Due to stasis of blood, the color of your gingiva can transition from a pink healthy to red inflamed and to a blue chronic lesion. Right? This is the gradual transition of the color. The second one is bleeding. Bleeding or bleeding on probing. Right. This bleeding on probing. Why this bleeding on probing happens in gingivitis? Inner lining, the circular epithelium, inner lining becomes ulcerated. It becomes a necrosis. There is increased capillary permeability. Right. Due to which, as soon as you put a probe, there is bleeding. Friability. Right. So, this bleeding can be due to two causes. It can be either local or it can be systemic causes. The local causes for bleeding are most likely your plaque induced. Are most likely your plaque induced. Very simple. The most commonly what happens as with your gingivitis. Right. It can also be as the same case in your anag or nag necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Wherein you get areas of ulceration due to which there is bleeding. It can be due to herpes. Right? There is formation and rupture of vesicles due to which you get bleeding or it can be due to an abscess where there is a friable swollen gums which can lead to bleeding. The systemic causes for bleeding are most commonly your blood disorders are your blood disorders. For example, your leukemia, right? you have hemophilia. Right, you have vitamin K deficiency. So all this are systemic reasons for bleeding. So, does not necessarily mean that if there is a bleeding, there is gingivitis. Right, bleeding has both local as well as systemic causes. So, once you rule out the systemic causes, you can focus on the local causes. And the third and the last point is your stippling. Yes, stippling. Stippling is nothing but orange peel appearance. The orange peel appearance of the gingiva, right? And where it is seen, how it is seen, you retract the lips. Do you see stippling? No, you have to dry. It is a feature of dry gingiva. You take a cotton, you wipe the gingiva, and then you observe it under natural light. Then you can see an orange peel appearance like this inside of an orange, right? Orange peel appearance. This stippling is due to the retipex that are found connecting the epithelium and the connective tissue like this elevations and depressions that is why you get porosities and this stippling is lost in case of disease this stippling is lost in case of disease or in case of gingivitis right then there are numerous other changes with respect to your size shape contour consistency and all that and one thing i'd like to discuss is there are some specific gingivitis or specific gingival lesions which are called as Stillman's cleft and McCall's festoons. Stillman's cleft and McCall's festoons, they are a specific enlargement or a specific lesion that is seen in gingivitis. That is, in Stillman's cleft, it is an apostrophe 
shaped lesion or a comma shaped apostrophe shaped or a comma shaped gingival recession that is let's say you have a tooth here the gingiva forms like this gingiva is present like this there is an apostrophe or a comma shaped gingival lesion or a gingival recession that is present and this is referred to as a stillman's cleft cleft there is a cleft formation and mccall's festoons are life preserver shaped they are life preserver shaped gingival enlargement all of you know what is a life preserver you would have used it in theme parks right to help you keep floating so life preserver is something like this it has a hole in between wherein you can hold insert yourself and hold it your gingiva can also become enlarged like a life preserver all around the tooth like this this life preserver shaped enlargement is referred to as mccall's festoons now listen very carefully both the stillman's cleft and the mccall's festoons initially were thought to arise due to trauma from occlusion were thought to arise due to trauma from occlusion due to the excessive occlusion load right but now but now they are believed they are believed to be a simple plaque induced lesion they are believed to be a simple plaque induced lesion for example let's say your stillman's cleft how it forms is the recent theory that explains it is there is enlargement on both these sides there is enlargement on interdental papilla on both these sides resulting what happens there is a cleft so that is the recent concept initially it was trauma from occlusion now it is inflammation plaque induced but in your need always go with trauma in your need always go with the trauma because that is the answer given as per the key right as per karenza it is still trauma always remember stillman's cleft and mccall's festoons are some variations of your gingivitis and they are thought to arise as a result of trauma okay so that in brief summarizes the stages of gingivitis and the clinical features